Today we're going to be talking about this, the Maytech 765 Wing Flight Controller. Now in this video I'm going to give you guys an overview of this autopilot, show you some of its features, walk you through setting it up and what you need to do to get it up and running, and then at the end of the video I'm going to show you how to install Ardra Pilot on it. Now out of the box this autopilot comes ready to go with iNav, but it is supported in Ardra Pilot as well, and you can install Ardra Plane or Ardra Copter on this autopilot if you want to. However, it's not quite as straightforward as it is in some of the other autopilots and you actually have to do it via the cube 32 software from st electronics rather than actually use mission planner for the first time and i'll show you how to do that at the end of this video as well now just before we get into it if you do like what you see please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. I'll also put a link to this autopilot in the description. It won't be an affiliate link. It'll just be one of a couple of vendors that I use. So if you do want to get yourself one, there'll be a link to it down below as well. Anyway, let's get on with this video and take a closer look at this autopilot from Maytech. The 765 Wing is an autopilot that is specifically designed for fixed wing applications. Its layout is of a triple board design with all of the headers on the top allowing for easy access. When you first get the autopilot none of the headers though are actually fitted and you will need to solder these on as you build the autopilot up. The design of this autopilot is a triple layer. You have a carrier board on the bottom, the main autopilot located in the middle and then a power board located on the top. Connectivity wise the board features 12 PWM outputs, 7 UART ports, 2 I2C ports as well as an SPI4 breakout. It also features your camera in an output for the built in OSD as well as dual BECs capable of supplying 9 or 12 volt up to 2 amps as well as 5 volt up to 2 amps as well. Taking a closer look at the spec, this autopilot features the STM32F765 SoC running at 216 MHz. It has 512K of RAM and 2 MB of flash storage, giving support for both Ardra Pilot and iNav. It features dual IMUs, both on SPI, which is the MPU6000, as well as the ICM20602. It has a built-in barrow sensor on I2C, which is the BMP280, and it features a built-in micro SD card slot for black box recording. It has a built-in dedicated OSD chip, which is the AT7456E, which is on SPI, which allows you to use it with analog FPV, but you can also use it with digital FPV on either SharkBite or DJI via one of the seven available UART ports. It also features a built-in battery monitoring and current sensing circuit alongside the BECs, which supports 3 to 8S and up to 132 amp of current on the battery sensor. Sensing. Now as I mentioned when you get this autopilot it comes as a kit and you will need to solder the headers on. Now I did all of the headers rather than just doing what I needed. So the first thing I did was cut them all out to the right size, lay them all in place, flip the board over and begin to solder the pins one at a time. Now it is quite a big task but as long as you've got all of the gear ready to go it doesn't take too long. Now just something to be aware of doing this a bit of flux goes a long way and it does make life a lot easier when there's a little bit of flux on the pads just allowing the solder to run nicely. Now again having a good soldering iron makes this task a lot easier and making sure that you've got one with a nice small nib will make sure that you're able to actually get the solder onto the pins without bridging anything or doing anything like that. Now as you've just seen we just put a bit more flux on and just finishing the overall soldering. Now something just to be aware of is you will need to set the voltage output on this as well. There's a jumper that you will need to solder across to depending on what output you want your voltage to be. Once you've done all the pins, you will then need to actually solder some wires and bridge the cables between the top and bottom board, so between the autopilot board and the BEC board to allow it to actually send power to the top. Now you simply do this with three wires from the bottom board to the top board. You could do it with pins. Personally, I prefer to do it with wires. That way I'm easily able to separate the board if I needed to do it in the future. 
and that's the autopilot all built up all of the headers are soldered in place now i actually replicated the color ordering that my texas have on their website just to keep it all the same but you could change it around if you wanted to now overall once you've got the pins in and the wires between the boards you're ready then to install the autopilot now on the back it is simply just completely blank there's nothing there ready to stick down with either some adhesive pad or tape depending on what your application is now that we've got the autopilot built up, the next thing we're going to do is install firmware. Now today we're going to install Ardra Pilot. Now the 765 wing is designed to be used with iNav, but it does work with Ardra Pilot too. When you get the controller, it has an iNav based bootloader installed already, but you can install Ardra Pilot over the top of it. Now to be able to do this though, you do need to go through a few specific steps and it is not as simple as just plugging into Mission Planner and telling it to install the correct firmware for the first time. You will need to use a third party piece of software designed to be used with the Autopilot's SoC and it's a piece of software called the STM32 Cube Programmer and this piece of software is available to download and it allows you to install the hex files directly onto the Autopilot SoC. Now Ardrapilot do have a dedicated page on how to do this as you can see on screen and it does walk you through the process however I'm going to take you through it now as well as we do it. Now just one thing I want to mention is once you have done the Ardra Pilot install this way for the first time you can install updates in the future via Mission Planner as normal. You simply need to do it via the STM32 Cube installer the first time because this autopilot comes with an iNav based bootloader installed out of the factory. So the first thing we're going to need to do is install that STM32 Cube programmer and its drivers. I will put a link to them in the description of this video as well. Once they are installed you then need to connect the autopilot to your computer whilst in DFU mode. Now to do that on this you simply hold down the little button labeled DFU on the side and plug in the USB. That should then be detected and the drivers should install on your computer and you should see it listed under device manager in DFU mode just like this. Now that is done, you're ready to install the firmware. Now you're going to need to download the hex file for your autopilot from the Android Pilot website. You simply go under the main Android Pilot downloads, find the version that you want to install. So for me, it is the latest. We're going to install it on plane and then we need to find the autopilot on the list. So for me, it is the 765 wing. So we simply need to find that from the list and then download the hex file to allow us to program this onto the computer. And we do this simply by clicking on it and then it will download the file to our downloads folder and then we will use that hex programmer to upload that directly onto the autopilot. Now we put the firmware downloaded, we can upload it to the autopilot. So we've gone back to the cube programmer and the first thing we need to do is make sure that it's connected. You click the little box in the top right hand corner. If you refresh it when the autopilot is in DFU mode, you can then click the option above which says connect and that will actually connect to the autopilot and make sure that you've actually got the MCU connected ready to upload the firmware. You then would simply click the open option at the top and then select the firmware that we've downloaded then you would then click download to actually install it onto the autopilot. Now this download option takes about five minutes in total. It's a bit longer than the usual download progress that you get in Mission Planner when you're installing Ardra Pilot, but you simply let it go through and it will then install the hex file onto the autopilot. And once it has done that, you can then disconnect it, reboot, and you will then be able to connect to the autopilot as normal via Mission Planner and do all of your normal configuration. You will only need to use this Cube Programmer at the start, the first time you put the firmware on this, but after that, you will be able to update and use Mission Planner, for instance, on Ardra Pilot as normal. And that is Ardra Pilot installed and we're ready to take the next steps. Now that is it for today's video. In my next one, I'm going to talk through setting it up with a GPS and compass module. We're going to get it installed in my airframe, do the configuration and actually take it for its first flight. Now, if you found this video useful, please do consider hitting that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. I also have a couple of playlists on Ardra Pilot as well as the Cube Autopilot and other ones out there too. So please do take a look at them if you do find this interesting. 
interesting. As I said, I'll also put links to the Ardra Pilot information in the description of this video as well. And in the comments, I'll put a link to the new video once that one is released as well.